Well, I mean, I think every week is different, but I think that there's certainly a lot of positives uh, from that in the rhythm and the efficiency and, you know, ha allowing plays to complement each other. So, I mean, that would be great. I would, I'm, I'm all for production uh, sooner rather than later. Is there a cap on play action? Like, is there a certain <laughs> point at which you say too, too much is diminishing returns? You did really well with what you did, but you didn't do a, a great, great deal. Well, I think it's about timing and picking and choosing your spots and, um, you know, getting a rhythm and, and a feel for, you know, when, when pressure, you know, may come. Sometimes some of those run actions, um, you know, the, pre the, the protection could be stressed based on a, a pressure uh, or look that, that you get. So sometimes we get out of it. But, um, you know, I don't think that there's a, a cap. You know, you just want to be – you know, balanced and, and be able to, to pick and choose your spots. And, and we you know, were able to, to hit a couple of them the other day. With those play action throws, your numbers passing wise always go up. Is, is there something to that? Well, it's hard to drop back and, you know, just straight drop back in this league and, and protect um, against some of the, the rushers that we've seen early in, in, the, in the first couple of weeks. And that'll be the same. Uh, this week, you know, so staying out of those down and distances where, you know, you got to get a bunch of people out or you got to get a certain depth. So I think that that's uh, probably the, the case throughout the week. You know, just looking at Cleveland, that's that's something that they like to do, you know, with Deshaun, you know, play action, sometimes move the pocket. Uh, so yeah, just trying to trying to mix it up and, and trying to get, be able to create some some double teams inside or some combination blocks uh, on some of those interior guys, and then you know get a couple hands on the on the edge rushers. You were in a position to cover a lot of those as a player. What's kind of outside of the discipline that it requires to, to what, what's what makes it hard? Well, a successful run game. You know, you're trying to create spaces. You're trying to get guys. Uh, into areas and, and voids of the, of the football field, um, you know. And if you can't get the linebackers up, well, then you probably shouldn't throw the ball, you know, in, inside, you know, around the hashes. Or, you know, maybe we had a favorable, you know, look last week, trailing one, and, and Chris won, and we were able to throw the ball downfield. I think that they're, you know, they they commit to to run football. The strength of their their football team is uh, up front. Uh, I would say on on both sides of the football. Not that they don't have good skill players or good linebackers or DBs, but as far as two units, uh, two really good fronts, uh, offensive line that's played together for, you know, for a while. I know they're mixing. You know, moved. Uh, you know. Ethan in there, and then obviously Jones. But you know they they've run the football forever, consistently. I know you know the, the Chubb's got a lot to do with that, but so did this offensive line. They hit a couple big runs in in Pittsburgh. Um, you know Cooper is able to create and joke. They use all the tight ends, and then you know the more. Uh, he's got a cool little package and looks like Deshaun likes him a little bit and they're doing some things with him in the backfield and handing it to him and, and trying to throw it to him. What do you think of Ford and, and do you think maybe they're built for the next guy to step in kind of the way you were when Derek went down? I think so. I mean, they gave him the ball in Cincinnati. He didn't have as, you know, as effective of a, of a game, but certainly a guy that you saw was tackled in the backfield and was able to make nine yards out of being, you know, hit in the backfield at four yards, was able to stop, cut, change direction, and, and circle up the defense for, for a big momentum-changing play the other night. So, um, would anticipate, you know, see what they do with with Hunt coming in. Like Burks and Moore were able to stack those guys. What's key for wide receivers to being able to do that? Well, just still trying to be able to maintain your speed down the field and through contact and, um, you know, get, getting off the line of scrimmage. You know, I think a lot of that is timing and, 
you know, being able to get off the line of scrimmage and still run. I think Traylon was a little different than Chris's. Chris, there was you know, a lot of contact there. So being able to track the ball and still maintain your speed. I know that they're not giving much up through the air or, or on the ground. Uh, not a whole lot of anything yeah, here, Kayla. How, how challenging is that? How do you kind of game plan for that situation? Trying to gain yards against a good defense, a bunch of good players, um, you know, on the road, just making sure that again we're we're staying efficient and, and they they've had a you know twenty five snaps of second and eight or nine plus, which you know leads to third and ten and third and long and you know guys are they're talented and you know, playing fast so just just trying to stay ahead of the chains and like we did the other other day. And again, it wasn't perfect, but it was closer to what we looked at, look, want to look like. I know that the grading that these analytics sites can put out are not necessarily gospel, but both weeks Chris Hubbard has seemed to grade out fairly well. How has he done in your eyes and at that right tackle spot? Uh, you know, I think Chris has been efficient and has played some winning football and, um, you know, he's done some good things for us and kind of, you know, like how he's come in here and worked and, um, prepared and love his attitude, and you know, so again, it, it's a, off to a good start. Garrett maybe different than what he's what Chris has dealt with so far. Uh, I don't think there's too many guys walking the earth like Miles uh, Garrett, so we'll be in for a huge challenge. Game plan against Deshaun. I know you guys are real familiar with him. Does he look relatively the same as he did when he was in division, or has his style changed at all over the last couple? No, of years? I don't think his style has changed. I, you know, Extends plays. He, he's got strength and you know great play strength in the pocket to to wait out receivers to to get him through to the second window. Um, extends plays. He's got length and you know, stiff arm and you know will scramble and, and can run um, to to get what he needs to get to. He's got can throw the ball to all all parts of the field. The Browns run defense. I believe they're tied with you guys for third in the league. What is it about them? That Makes them so stout. Uh, well, I mean, they, they gap up. I mean, they, they gap you up and they um, they attack, they penetrate, they run, they fast, they tackle. Safeties are, um, you know, good good players. You know, and Delpa you know, has made a lot of tackles in and around the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, but they, 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 they force you to, to get into the line of scrimmage and, and to block them. Yeah. When you're going against a run defense like that that's so good, like how much do you factor in, okay, I want to dictate what I want to do against them regardless of, of the outcome, or do you just look at it where you, you just kind of – I don't want to throw the ball 50 times and, you know, think that we can beat the Browns by throwing it 50 times because they've got a good run defense. I mean, that, that wouldn't – I don't think that's the answer. But, um, you know, we'll have to stay balanced and have to set up plays and, and hope that they complement each other. But, you know. Just because they're good against the run, I don't think we should pass it 50 times. With Peter out, guard is a good spot for Dylan to kind of help you out. Is there a plan yet as to what his role could be after Peter's back with inside, outside? No, I mean, I, I thought Dylan did a, did a great job for his first action and, you know, excited to see him continue to, to progress and, you know, get back out there and help us and play and, uh, you know, we'll see where things are tomorrow and see where things are on Friday and whenever anything else happens. I'm sure there'll be something else that happens between now and the time that that Nick Petit, you know, comes back to play for us. How is Peter Just a hunch. Doing? How is Peter doing? Yeah, he's doing okay. Is there any hope that he can play Sunday given what he went through? I, I don't think that uh, I wouldn't anticipate Peter being out there this week. I think maybe due to earn hit the standard elevation call-ups the past couple of weeks and now Earn's place on the 53. He's very coachable. You know, he kind of knows who he is. He plays within himself, plays within the scheme. Um, you, know, he's, you know, technique and, you know, just kind of been a good addition here. How are I think they'll both practice today. So better than what they were last week. Well, it'll it'll be important. 
you know it'll always be important but it's it's not you know we we have to do a better job of you know the x plays on on first and second down and you know the communication there when it not to say that stop of the run's not important but you know we we, we have to make sure that we're affecting the quarterback and you know making sure that uh guys are covered you know what i mean like like they were at times and then unfortunately just you know some x plays or or some some loose coverages just i guess for clarification does that mean amani is clear protocol and uh not not officially you know there's a process to it that includes a practice or, or two before officially uh clearing but he's cleared to practice kind of a unique role you brought him in. Did that play out how you envisioned, you know, over the course of the two years? And how much of an impact did, did he have on the team? Well, one, it, um, one, I think it did, did play out. You know, I thought it was something that, you know, we had great conversations. I thought that uh, it, had, it had to be right for him. It had to be right for us, make sure that it was, you know, in the role that, that he was looking for at that point in time in his career. Um, you know, the impact, I think the impact was, you know, by, by everybody, you know, it was, you know, coaching staff, players, um, always appreciate, you know, what, what Jim provided to the coaches, to our staff, you know, help on game day, um, you know, anything that we asked him to do or, you know, asked Shane asked him to do, he did. Uh, then he kind of started on, you know, wanted to transition or have an opportunity to, to, to coordinate again. And so he was honest and upfront with me and him and I, we communicated. And then, you know, he had had a few opportunities and, you know, he felt like this one was the right one for him and the timing worked out. So I was happy for him that he was able to, to come here, stay involved, be, you know, help us. And then also now, you know, go and, go and coordinate. His familiarity with uh, a lot of the defensive personnel is that something that that can, he can you know can be used against you guys, or is it you know sometimes it's easy to overthink when you when you think you know somebody too well. Uh, I, you know, you'd have to ask Jim on whenever they have availability. I don't, I don't know. They they're holding uh, I think the numbers forty eight point three percent completions against them. What uh, what are they doing so well in pass defense? They got a nose guard that sprints off the ball. They got a three technique that sprints off the ball. And they got two edge rushers uh, that that come flying in there. Uh, mix a couple different coverages. And they got a bunch of good players over there. So it'll be a huge challenge. Oh, we started executing. You know, I think it. Uh started coming together for us. We were able to, to get points going into halftime, right? Got three points going into halftime. We were able to come out and score uh, in, in the second half. And, uh, you know, when you're efficient on first and second down, keep yourselves in third and manageable and are able to hit big plays when they come, you're going to give yourself a good opportunity to score. What are the things that kind of dictate how much or how little play action you'll do in the game? You had great, great success on play action, obviously, in this game, but only nine snaps worth. So what kind of dictates the size of the envelope? A lot of things go into that, you know, um, defenses that they're playing, coverages, pressures, um, how we feel about the different protections that we're running, uh, the route concepts with the, the coverages that we're getting. You know, you have a plan going into the game, and then you're trying to figure it out as the game goes on, like what you're seeing primarily, and, and make adjustments from there. How much does that help you like, with that play action as far as like, how it helps move linebackers or defenders you know, out of the place that you want to attack? Yeah, when uh, when guys step up, it obviously creates some holes on the back end. You know, we've seen that for for a number of years here, as as, uh, as, as well as Derek runs it, and we're able to to be efficient running the football. Then uh, linebackers have to step up and fill those holes and, and create some space behind them. Well, it definitely makes an impact, obviously. Um, you know, make some big plays downfield and um, create some awareness of, of what can happen and then uh, shortens those drives. Like I mentioned after the game, you know, you're able to hit those those chunk plays and it, uh, it shortens the number of plays it's going to take to score. You got that play call, right? You guys, I think the Chargers had scored, you had maybe two yards of offense. Tell me about that 
Tim Kelly tells you at the, the play call, like, do you get excited? What's going through your mind that there's, you know, you're, you're hearing that you know it's about to happen? Yeah, I knew we were going to have a chance. Didn't know, obviously, what coverage they were going to play. If you're going to have a chance at the uh, at the deep one or, um, or you know, have a chance at the cross, right? There's a limited number of options in that play, but uh, coverage really dictates where the uh, the ball can go in that play. So I wasn't sure exactly where the ball was going to go, and then I saw a good coverage pre-snap and were able to hit it to Traylon. What kind of concerns you most when you start looking at the Browns? They're a fast physical defense. You know, you see them flying around, uh, aggressive, penetrating fl uh, front. Uh, their D-line is strong. Obviously, we know their edge players and, and the talent that they have out there. Their, their inside guys are, are penetrating as well, just being disruptive. Their backers are flying around. They're playing extremely fast, uh, seeing what's going on quickly, uh, diagnosing it, and, uh, and playing physical and fast. Uh, secondary, uh, they're doing a good job of getting their hands on footballs and, and being in good spots. They have talent out there. So you look across the board, I have a ton of respect for this defense and, and what they can do. Obviously, Coach Schwartz was here and um, just a great coach and been around a long time, done a lot of good things over the course of, of his career. So a um, ton of respect for what they're doing right now, and we're going to have to play well. Touchdown catch for you on Sunday on a third and goal, and then against the Saints, he also made a couple plays for you late. What is Nick Westbrook Aquino? What does he do that kind of earns your trust in those clutch situations? Nick's consistent. You know, he's been, been the same guy and steady improvement since he got here, I don't remember exactly, three or four years ago now. Um, just a guy who comes to work each and every day. You know what you're getting from him. He's consistent, he practices, um, and exactly what he does in practice is what he does in the game. And he showed up big for us on a number of occasions, um, does some dirty work for us, and then obviously has the talent to, uh, to make plays for us outside. So thankful to have Nick on our team. We can move him around in a lot of different spots. So he's a, a versatile player who adds a lot of value to our team. Knowing how good this defense is, how important was it to have such a good game against the Chargers for your confidence and for this team's confidence? Yeah, we're trying to win one game at a time. We weren't thinking about this week going uh, last week, you know. But uh, it's good to get a win, get things going in the right direction. Now we just want to start stacking those wins. Brian, what does it mean to have seven different pass catchers and Derek Johnson combined for 130 yards rushing? Do you spread it around like that? Yeah, we, the more weapons you can get involved, obviously, the, the more dangerous you're going to be. Uh, we have a bunch of talent on the team, and, and the more we can get everyone involved and, and guys who have proven to help us over the course of training camp in the first few weeks, you know, we want to get those guys touches as well. Brian, you touched on the Browns defense. Um, they've allowed the fewest passing and rushing first downs in the league so far. How do you approach that challenge? Yeah, we're going to have to play well. Obviously, I mentioned how they're playing. They're playing really good football. They're aggressive. Uh, they're pressuring, uh, being disruptive up front. Um, just a really, really solid defense and uh, makes it really challenging. So offensively, we're going to have to be at our best, execute, and um, just know, you know, not every play is going to be perfect, but we just got to keep fighting, keep playing, and uh, take advantage of opportunities when they come. First field line. Go ahead, Jim. Did you, did you have a pretty good feeling of the Andre would play during the course of last week? And uh, how were you guys able to kind of manage to kind of be on the same page for a couple of big completions without having any practice? Before? Yeah, I didn't know. You know, I was talking to Hop throughout the week, but didn't really know what uh, was going to happen come Sunday, you know, since he wasn't able to go uh, throughout the week. Um, but, you know, we had built up some reps throughout the course of training camp. That's why I mentioned just him practicing over training camp was so crucial, just building that trust and, and that relationship. And so, you know, even though he didn't practice throughout the week, he was able to come in and make some huge plays for us. First down passing really set you guys up against the Chargers. How, how refreshing is that to be in, in such good down and distance situations? And what can you guys do to kind of carry that forward and continue it? Yeah, we want to be efficient. You know, whether it's a run, whether it's a pass, if you can be efficient on first and second down and keep yourselves in third and manageable, then you're going to. Uh, create more opportunities to, to extend drives and, and to score points, right? So being in second and long, third and long is a tough place to live in this league. You know, you're not going to convert too many third and 10 pluses over the course of a season, you know, percentage wise. So uh, if we can keep ourselves in third and manageable by being efficient on first and second down, that's going to be obviously like it is for every team, a big factor in sustaining drives. How enjoyable was it to, to keep looking at, the, do you look at the board? Do you look at the sticks to know the down and you just know it and to know you were in second and medium or short so often? Yeah, I look at uh, both the combination of the of the two. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good good place to be, right? Because it opens up a lot of your playbook when you're in uh, normal down and distance. You're not in get back on track. And um, you're able to really call anything you want to at that point and not be pigeonholed to uh, to getting back on track. What's the key to the wide receivers stacking down How much did that help on those? I guess 
especially the first play, how well people can just stack really with these people. Yeah, it was a great job. He just played fast, man. Traylon, uh, Traylon's a big, strong, physical, physical guy, and when he gets going like that, he's uh, he's tough to slow down. So, uh, great job of of playing with speed and then second level release with his hands in order to get on top of that DB and, and make the big play. How well do you know Miles Garrett with the A and M connection? Are there any things you've seen or stories you've heard that kind of stand out about just how special he is? Yeah, I don't know him well. Um, I think I've met him once or twice just after playing against him, but um, just a, a special player. You know, you, you see a guy who's got the the size and strength, but then he also has the speed, you know, so he's a <laughs> extremely talented player that I have a ton of respect for. Um, you know, he's disruptive. He he has every kind of rush in the book, you know. Um, you see him bending the corner and getting low like some speed guys do, and then you also see him, you know, pushing the tackle back like like power guys do. So really a, a tough guy to, uh, to block, especially consistently, and a ton of respect for him. Ryan, in this league, guys can go from being, you know, the, the, the person that everyone wants ridden out of town on a rail one week uh, to the hero the next week. With your experience, does that maybe help you deal with going from the opener to the, to the performance that you turned in on Sunday? Yeah, I don't ride that wave. I know uh, a lot of people, especially outside the buildings, you know, ride those waves. But um, personally, um, take it one week at a time. Improve on the things that, that – try to improve on the things that you – I want to each and every week and, and go out and play play football and not let one week roll into the next. I don't know, not something I think about a, a whole lot. Um, but yeah, felt good. I had great protection primarily as where it started, right? I was able to kind of step into that throw. Obviously, trailing was, was Playing fast, really just came off the ball and ran 40 yard dash for however many yards it ended up being. Um, so I was able to uh, just cut it loose and, and throw it over the top. Come out easy, or are you, or are you really putting a lot of oomph on that? Um, I don't know what your, your question is. I mean, when you when you're throwing a, a ball that with that many air yards, are you are you at this stage putting everything you've got into it, or is no, it no, good? not everything, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a far throw, so you're definitely putting some some muscle into it. Yeah, I I, uh, I enjoy running the football. It's something that I think adds uh, an element to our offense that defenses have to account for. Um, you know, last year was was limited with the ankle for for a lot of the season, and was just trying to uh, to be able to move a little bit in the pocket and wasn't able to run too much outside. But um, yeah, I think it adds an element to our, our offense and and helps us. Triple you option there. Yeah, no question. Triple option there. Can you kind of talk us through seeing that play in the playbook the first time, installing it, and, and working all the way up to, to using it? Yeah, I don't remember exactly. It was in training camp sometime. We put it in, and maybe it was in the spring. Uh, put it in and run it several times over the course of uh, the past several months. Uh, it's looked good in practice, and it was, it was awesome to be able to hit it in the game. When you fake the pitch with that much space at the end, are you surprised the degree to which it's – it worked? It sold? No, I mean, I've seen it work in, in practice as well. Uh, you know, when you have Derek running out there, it helps. You know, they uh, they think you're going to get him the ball and, uh, and you know, took the bait. Different style of play. Last one. What was your second best sport growing up, and how far do you think you would have gotten if you focused on it? <laughs> My second best sport? Uh, I played a lot of sports growing up. You know, um, in high school, I played football, basketball, baseball, track, and even one year golf. Uh, so I played a lot of sports. Um, you know, I think playing a lot of sports can help you develop athletically as, as you move around and and learn. Played soccer growing up when I was younger. Um, my second best sport is probably basketball uh, or track. Uh, I was decent at at the mid level. You know, 300 hurdles, uh, 400, uh, triple jump. You know, so um, those two were probably my my next favorites besides football. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You're going to have to go look and dig deep in some. They won't be in the record books, but they'll be in some kind of books. <laughs>